Hi everyone, Dr. Emmy from Pain Free and Fit. Today, a great exercise for those of you with spondylolisthesis in the lower back, L3, L4, L5, and S1. This is an intermediate exercise that combines several corrections that are typically needed by most spondylolisthesis low back pain sufferers, known as the pelvic tilting Bulgarian split squat. Hope you enjoy. So the Bulgarian split squat is a great way to train your posterior pelvic tilting in cases of spondylolisthesis in the lower back. If you've seen any of our other videos on the channel, you know that many cases of spondylolisthesis at L3, L4, L5, S1 are aggravated when the pelvis tilts forward. That is when the pubic bone becomes lower and the tailbone becomes higher than that level plane. It increases the arch in the lower back, hyperlordosis or increased lordosis, thus jamming the facet joints in the back of the disc in the lower back and creating a mechanical scenario where the spondylolisthetic vertebra is driven more forward. Now, if you have a case of spondylolisthesis that doesn't have an anterior pelvic tilt, this exercise won't necessarily be helpful for you. But if you learn a good body analysis on yourself, know what your mechanical flaws are that are contributing to your lower back pain, as we have free on the painfreeandfit.com website, you can understand what mechanical targets need to be emphasized in your training. With many cases of spondylolisthesis, anterior pelvic tilting is an aggravating factor where pain is in increased as the tailbone comes up and as that pelvis tilts forward. So if you've seen our other videos on leg extension with spondylolisthesis, you know that as the leg goes backwards in relation to the other leg, what's called hip extension, it increases that arch, thus many times aggravating spondylolisthesis. And this is one way that we can train our ability to maintain a neutral or stable spine by posterior pelvic tilting. If you have an anterior pelvic tilt in your body, you know the correction is a posterior pelvic tilt where you tuck your tailbone under and raise your pubic bone. And that takes that plane of your pelvis and levels it out to a more horizontal position, thus decreasing the stress on spondylolisthesis by decreasing the arch in your back. So when you stand with one leg behind you, because of tight hip flexor muscles, which many cases of spondylolisthesis have, the hip flexors are stretched as the leg goes back and it tilts the pelvis anteriorly. The correction for that, of course, is pelvic tilting. So if you stand with your legs straight together, pelvic tilting will be rather easy to do. However, once you've accomplished this and trained yourself in doing that and realized the benefit on your lower back pain, you can practice having your leg further and further back. The further back it goes, the more the pelvis wants to tilt forward and the more abdominal tension you need to pull that tailbone under and that pubic bone up. We're going to plug these concepts into a more intermediate slash advanced exercise using the Bulgarian split squat. The Bulgarian split squat has the leg elevated behind as opposed to the leg flat on the floor. This allows the hip to go back even further, thus creating more of a danger by anterior pelvic tilting for those with spondylolisthesis vertebra that are aggravated with extension, which as I said, many are. So before you put your leg up, you want to put yourself in your neutral spine, your RPI, reverse posture isometric. Remember that more than pelvic tilting is usually associated with protecting your spine. Some of us may need to check that we don't have one hip elevating or a pelvic twist that occurs, creating a, a torque or a rotational stress on our facet joints, on our discs, on our tendons and muscles in the lower back. Some of us may need to emphasize an internal oblique correction. Some of us may need to emphasize a glute or a latissimus correction. So whatever your unique needs are based on your body analysis, you need to plug those in with this or any exercise that's designed to rehab your back and get you out of spondylolisthesis pain. So we put our RPI or neutral spine position on. For me, I'm going to use a little posterior pelvic tilt and I'm going to engage my left multifidus at L5, making sure that my left hip is down and my left rib is up so I'm not hip hiking. Again, that's my neutral spine RPI. Yours may be totally different. Once I do that, I'm going to maintain that tension as the leg goes back to resist the tendency to anterior pelvic tilt. And once I'm in position, the Bulgarian split squat is performed by moving my body straight up and down. Now, as I do this, it's going to be rather easy to hold my pelvic tilt in a posterior direction, keeping that arch checked when I'm up high, but the further I descend, now those hip flexor muscles, particularly the rectus femoris, is going to stretch and want to pull that pelvis more anteriorly. So I'll need more pelvic tilt tension to maintain that neutral spine position so I don't change that 
arch contour in the lower back. If I descend too much, I can keep my hand on my lower back and I feel a little arch in the back, I've gone too far. So you want to work within a range of motion that allows you to train that. As you get better with this, you're going to be able to get deeper because you're going to have the abdominal strength to keep your tailbone tucked under and maintain that neutral spine position as you do your Bulgarian split squats back and forth. Again, using this first without weight and then eventually you can hold dumbbells. You could use a barbell on a bar thigh type split squat if you want. We'll add extra intensity to the exercise. This is a multi-benefit exercise. As I'm doing that split squat, not only am I ch checking my anterior pelvic tilt with posterior pelvic tilt hold, but I'm also increasing the strength of my glutes, my thighs, my glute medius, so I'm not hip hiking. As I'm doing that, I'll give you a front view. I'm making sure that my front thigh is not caving in, and I'm making sure that my hip is not elevating or my rib cage leaning in. That's a typical mistake with any type of split squat or lunge. The foot starts to pronate, move in, the knee moves in, hip comes up and rib comes over. Compressing the lower back on one side, overstretching another, which many times is going to aggravate spondylo pain. So keep that in mind as you're doing that. You not only want to be cognizant of the fact that you want to keep that tail under the lower you go, but you also want to keep your other corrections as you're working your thighs, as you're working your glutes, increasing the repetitions of this, increasing the depth of it, and increasing eventually the distance that your leg goes back are all going to help you increase your strength of avoiding anterior pelvic tilting, avoiding increasing the arch in the back and aggravating spondylolisthesis compression at L4, L5, S1, L3. If you'd like this video presentation on Bulgarian split squats for spondylolisthesis pain, check out our channel. Subscribe to it. We've got a lot of great videos out there to help you. Questions or comments, write in as always. I'll do my best to help you. And remember, if you're looking for a great program for spondylolisthesis to help figure out what your body mechanics are, do a self-analysis on yourself, analyze all your muscles, your posture, your movement patterns, your stability issues as it ha has to do with your spondylolisthesis, and learn a step-by-step -step program of how to customize a program for yourself to help rehab your body, to improve your mechanics, to create less stress on your back and allow it to finally heal itself from your spondylolisthesis pain, check out our fast track program for spondylolisthesis available at painfreeandfit.com. I hope this video on spondylolisthesis at L3, 4, 5, and S1 and Bulgarian split squat training helps you with your chronic low back spondylolisthesis pain.